Welcome back to the CHS Seminar Videos for Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS. I am Carol King, the founder of CHS, and this is Lesson 5 of our Seminar Videos. In previous lessons, we set up our master cost centers, started a new demo job, we predicted the job's costs on the job budget worksheet, then we produced a proposal for the customer, and we did some purchase orders or work orders, to record our committed costs and to record who would be providing the supplies or services for various cost centers on the jobs budget. So now, a couple of weeks later, after setting a contract price and getting the contract signed, our home buyers have suddenly decided that they want to add a 400 square foot patio off the family room that was not on the original plans and was not included in the agreed upon contract price. So we need a way to come up with the estimated cost for that patio and then set a price for that change order so that we can show the buyers how the change order will add to the contract price and we need to collect the money for that change order. We also probably need to issue some purchase orders or work orders if we're using them for the extra labor and materials. And we need to know how many days the change order will add to the schedule and to the projected closing date. So in this lesson, we will create the change order for the patio, issue some change order POs for that, and collect for the change order. We will also talk about allowance overages, how allowances are different than change orders, and how they each affect the estimated cost of completion and the contract price. So let's get started. So here we are back on the main menu of CHS and I have clicked this button to open the jobs dashboard and I have selected our demo job, Loveman 2. And from there, I clicked on Estimated Cost at Completion to open the Estimated Cost at Completion worksheet so I can show you a few things I've done since our last video. For one thing, I have added in a whole bunch of purchase orders for various cost centers, and you can see that we are totaling to various POs here. For another thing, I have set the contract price to a little bit different and changed it to a fixed contract. But before we go there, let's take a look at amounts that are over budget or under budget as is slab contract over here and that our total ECC is this and that we are currently showing that we're actually going under budget by 493.85. I wanted to point out a couple of things to you if you're looking at why this is showing under budget by so much because our total budget and our original budget are the same and we've issued POs but we've check marked them to use the lower POs as the ECC which is causing this to be under and if you drill down on this and you're curious about it you can see that Glenn at Big Buck agreed to charge 1150 per slab square feet instead of the 14 and that we did have a variance PO but even with that the difference is causing our amount to go quite a bit under which is great for us now we have one in red right here, and I'd like to show you something for just a second. Do a field search, and I've already typed it in, over here under ECC over. And if you read the tips that are here, you can see that not equal to, you need to use an exclamation point equals. Exclamation point equals zero is for not equal to zero. So let's say we just want to see the ECC over or unders that are not equal to zero. So if I do a search, I can just see ones that only have over or under and are not any zeros, meaning they equal the budget. So now we only have nine records showing. You can do various other kinds of searches. You'll see one for allowances in just a little bit, but you can do a report of those search results. And it's going to say that it's the search total here and it's going to show what you searched for. So you can get that list and the over under right here on a report. But let's also look at that framing labor and see why it's over. Let's just drill down on that. And you'll notice that Acosta is charging $13 per frame square feet instead of the $12 we originally estimated. Maybe we got a bid or something. I'd like to show you how you get those notes in so that somebody can know about that. So if I drill down on the total POs for the framing labor and I get the PO open by clicking on the PO total there, notice how in the internal notes of the PO as I was creating it, I put in that note that you were seeing that popped up a minute ago. So it's a good idea to go ahead and write yourself some internal notes here so that somebody reviewing the ECC 
can drill down and see what notes you wrote about it. Since I opened the POs, it refreshed and brought back everything, but if I do resubmit, that means it's going to resubmit my search, and I'm just seeing only the ones that are over or under the original budget. I'm going to go ahead and show all instead. And I'd like to go ahead and click on the ECC tools and use the set price contract type that we saw when creating a budget for doing our proposal. I've made a few changes. I changed the fixed price to 517, 517,000. I adjusted the markup to that. And I marked this as a fixed contract just so that we can review how change orders affect fixed contracts and allowance adjustments affect fixed contracts. Cost plus jobs are different, but we're going to focus on a fixed contract for you to get the concept. Now notice it's showing the current ECC amount right here, which is different than the job budget. And as we saw on the estimated cost of completion back here, the ECC under budget is 493.85 right now. We have not had any actual cost posted yet. So that's not affecting our current ECC balance. Just the ECC is being affected by various POs that we've issued. The difference right there, then, very simply, without change orders or allowance adjustments or actual costs, is causing our profit to be going higher by 493.85, which makes sense that if we take the 517 minus the current ECC, we get a revised profit. And we see that our profit is heading up just a little bit right at this point in time. And it shows that we have received $40,000 in revenues as a down payment from the buyers. So that's right there. So let's get on with creating a change order for that patio and see what happens to the estimated cost at completion and to the contract price. So I have returned to the jobs dashboard for Loveman 2 and I need to create a change order for that patio that we're going to add. So I'm going to click this link for Add New Change Order. The window that opens already has the job selected and its address, and it's asking for a change order number. There are some hints here about making a change order number, and I'm going to follow those hints and use the job code followed by a hyphen and an 01 since this is the first change order that we'll be doing. If there have been previous change orders, they would be listed here so you'd know what number you should use. You should use two numbers. Since things are sorted as text, you don't want the 1 to be next to a 10 in a list of change orders. So if you use two numbers like 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, up to 0, 09, and then start with 10, 11, 12, etc., that will work right for sorting these in the order of these numbers. Then you need to assign it a main title for the overall change order. So I'll do 400 square foot patio off of family room. And then I will create the change order. And what it will do is open to enter the first line of the change order, and you'll notice over here that you can start adding lines. In our case, if you think about it for a patio, I'm not a builder, I might leave out some stuff, but I'm going to decide that I will probably need four lines. One for the slab for the patio, one for framing labor, one for framing materials, and one for the roof for the patio. The reason for the four lines is that because of the estimated cost at completion worksheet, we need to allocate the cost to the right cost centers when we are estimating what the cost of the change order will be. And you'll see the effect of that on the ECC after we finish. So first of all, I'm going to start with the slab for 400 square foot patio. So I'm going to choose the cost code for slab contract. And stage 2 dropped in right away which is foundation stage because that's the stage that's connected to this cost code. If this is going to occur in a different stage of the job, you can select a different stage. Maybe all the foundation stage is done and this change order is coming up way later. You can change the stage. Let's decide it'll take two days for the slab for the patio. So the schedule will be affected by these two things, so you should pay attention to what they are. Now I'm going to drill down on the ECC information for that cost code I selected for that job. And I'm going to take a glance at the information I have about the P that we issued. Now remember there were some notes written that I showed you just a little while ago that says that Glenn agreed to 1150 per slab square feet. So let's just decide that's what we're using to estimate our costs. 
So let's do a quantity of 400 square feet, 1150 as the unit price, and let's come up with 4600 as our estimated cost. Now you have some options here. You can use a combination of a markup plus a flat fee or just enter the price, and the price to the customer will be calculated based on what you do. If I put in 25%, it's going to give a price of 57.50. If I set that to zero and put in, let's say I'm at a charge of just a fee of $500, then the price to the customer is 51.50. If I put in a price myself, like 5,500, CHS is going to calculate what that flat fee is and make the price be the 5,500 that I typed in and put this as a flat fee. Now I'm going to go ahead and put 25% in, which changed the flat fee out, and put this to 5750 because we're going to follow through with our 25% markup that we talked about when we were doing the budget. I'm going to do three more lines and come back to this video in just a minute. Okay, I have added the three more lines, frame labor, framing materials, roofing. The frame labor, I looked up the PO and saw that they were charging us 13 per square foot. I think I put a 25% markup. I put two days for the framing labor, one to get the materials, one for the roofing, etc. And at the bottom, you can see delay days of six. The total estimated cost is 14925 And the total price to the customer with 25% being put on each line is this and you will see what the estimated profit 373125 on this change order is. I'm going to go ahead and decide we've had enough discussion with the buyer that I'm going to mark this as builder approved. And so I will submit the change order. Change orders have been posted. And now what you will see is the four lines that I did. And I am inserting some information here about an update that was done in July 2022 that was not included on this video. I'm adding in the fact that you can now sign the change order as builder approved when you say that it's approved. So I'm showing how this is popping up a message when I open the change order lines saying it's been marked as builder approved but there is no builder signature. When you mark that as builder approved on the previous screen and this screen that shows the lines on the change order opens, you will get this pop-up so that you can sign the change order. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and put in some signature of mine. And then I need to commit it and then I need to submit it. Now what happens is it says your signature has been saved but a hard copy of the change order was not found and we'll be getting to that in a little bit. But to store a hard copy you can do print this CO button right here. But we're not going to do that right now. We'll come back to this. If we do a hard copy and we look at a printout of the change order, let me just show you. We won't do a hard copy but let me just show you opening one of these change order uh, types of things here just real quick. And I want to show you that down here CHS has added my signature in here and if I export it to PDF it won't have this funny lines. It's not totally formatted well on this quick view but on the PDF you'll see that down here my signature is there. That proved to me that I did sign it. So later when I come back in here and I decide which change order printout I want the home buyer to see I will make a hard copy of it, but I'm not going to store a hard copy right now. So that's a little bit of the update. Some things that will change for the rest of this video that you're not seeing on it is that it's showing builder approved. Yes, it will give you some information about your signature. You still have the unapproved this CO, which will then get rid of your signature. And you're seeing whether the buyer online has approved the lines yet, and it says no. Also, this says print this CO, store hard copy. That's a little bit of what the differences are and the way the builder approval and buyer approval is displayed versus what you're going to see in the rest of this video. So we'll carry on again. And on each one of these lines, you can drill down on the line so that you can add some detailed notes about this particular thing some internal notes about the slab for the square foot if you like and you can upload some sort of plans or whatever for the patio if you like here and attach it to show the buyer when they're looking at the change orders they would see the attachment but I'm not going to do any of those so I won't take so much time. If you need to change the markup percent or something else the quantity the unit price etc you can or the line title here but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to issue a PO for the slab and then I'll do the other POs when we come back. But let's see right here how we can create
create a PO for the slab for this change order. So let's do Big Buck. That's who we're using for the slab contract. And it marked the PO as a PO type of change order. But I'm going to make the PO title be slab contract for 400 square foot patio. Just so the purchase order is clear to Big Buck when they receive it. It supplied our estimate here, which is fine. I think I'll go ahead and do it 400 quantity and 11.5 and then create the purchase order. Notice that right here it has a PO type of change order. It's giving the change order line number and the line title so that you're sure this PO is attached to the right change order. And then I'll do print store PO just so you can see it. Do my signature. Let's open it. We don't have any attachments to it, but maybe we would have had a bid that we uploaded that we got from them for this. So we'll just take a look at that purchase order. Since I selected PO, the word purchase order is at the top. Like I showed you before, you could do a work order. You could have typed a bunch of notes in for the purchase order, etc. So you'll see how the PO is going out for this 4600 and how that title of that PO is showing at the top so it's clearer what it's for. Anyway, we will close this. I'm not going to store it as a hard copy right at the moment. So we have issued a PO to go with this change order line. Now I'm going to go ahead and issue some POs for all three of those change order lines in just a little bit but I want to finish out this portion. So let's close that. We now have a PO for that and we marked that this is builder approved. If for some reason you need to unapprove this change order, you can, but let's go ahead and show you what happens when you print this CO for the customer. Notice that there's no hard copy of the change order stored yet. In other words, there's nothing that the customer will be seeing yet. But first of all, I need to select a style that I'm going to print or a plain CO, but I can add or edit styles. If I don't like the word change order to be at the top of the things that I print out, I could add a new report style that's called something else, and then I could set up or edit the style, but right here this builder has change order to be at the top, and then the verbiage that he wants inside the change order with a builder signature line, etc. But you can change all of this and save it, but you can make as many different styles as you like here to choose from right now. But we're going to go ahead and just choose the change order style. There are various things you can print. A CO with line item amounts, all of them and all the notes. One grand total for the whole CO. Totals grouped by line title or with CO lines and no amounts. But the uh, one that is effects on contract price. If you right here, you can see the four lines and if I'd written any notes about them to the home buyer, those would be printed here. The total delay days, the total price to the home buyer. This is not our estimated cost. This is the price to the home buyer. You can see that verbiage from the style I selected coming in here and down at the bottom, you can see the original contract price plus builder approved change orders, not including this particular change order, which have been none. So revised contract plus this change order means this will be the revised contract price. So now let's talk about printing a hard copy or storing a hard copy for your home buyer to see online if you set them up online. This screen has changed a little bit. I have bumped into here and I'm in July 2022 with the updates for the buyer to be able to sign online. So let's click this print CO store hard copy of our change order we've been talking about. Now notice, to store or send a hard copy, click a printout button below and follow steps. Now you can choose any one of these or with attachments, but I'm going to choose one with the effects on the contract price. Now what you'll notice from something I showed just a little while ago is that if you slide down here, I have removed the builder signature lines from here for my style, my CO style. And if you're an older customer and you've set up some styles, you might have put some just blank builder and buyer signature lines in here, but now with the new feature, CHS has added this at the end of the change order. And if I export it to PDF, you can see the signatures much better than with this little line around it because that initial quick view doesn't format them as good, but you can see the signature that I did earlier on here. So let's close that and let's close this. And what will happen is it will ask, do you want to store a hard copy basically? And that hard copy is what the builder, I mean, what the buyer will see online or in a comment that you use to send the change order. So let's go ahead and say yes, store the hard copy. 
And what it's done is open something for me to tag various things about the hard copy of the change order. But if I open the file, I can double check to see that it is my change order in a PDF form, etc. And I can check it out to make sure that's what I want stored. The other thing is right now if you would like to send a short URL that is a link to the hard copy of that change order, you can use this feature right here to copy the small URL to your clipboard, open your own email, etc. if you want to send something to your buyer or copy the change order to one of your users. In your own email you can do that and copy this short URL and when they click it that change order will open. I'm going to save all of this and close. Now you'll notice that there's a hard copy here. And if you click the paper clip icon, you will see that. You could clear the hard copy as long as the home buyer has not signed it, etc. <laughs> because once they see the hard copy, we start having some rules about not signing it. If you click this button, you'll get information about sending the change order, which means make a hard copy. And then try clicking the Send CO. Let's see what happens when I do that. Well, I've gotten a message that says the buyer has not been set up to view and sign approval of change orders online. You can set up a buyer to sign approval of change orders online by using the job setup window and then clicking the button labeled Setup Online Access. Because I've gotten this message, I'm not going to click OK yet to send the comment. Let's cancel and let's go ahead and close this window and let's close out of our change orders and right on your jobs dashboard there is a link for edit job setup or you can go to the home tab and do jobs and open a jobs list and then find the job and then edit it and you'll get the same screen but I'll do it from the jobs dashboard because that's where I'm at and this is the job setup window now somebody with high permission can go ahead and set up buyer online access first of all if you do not have a buyer attached to the job you may need to first of all click this button to set up a new buyer and then select that new buyer to attach it to this job. But we have the buyer set up, but let's see what's going on with set up buyer online access. Well, first of all, it says no. Active online, no. So we're going to say yes. And let's just give them a simple password. Let's do 3456. Okay, that was accepted. It wasn't said that somebody else is using it, and our builder ID is this, and our job is this. And I want to decide what the buyer will be able to see online. I'd like them to see online messages, maybe not selections for right now, or punch lists or warranty. But the job budget, this is a fixed contract, so let's just do marked up only. Actual budget versus actual cost, not marked up. Since this is a fixed contract, we don't want them to see that. And we don't want them to see estimated costs at completion, but for fixed, you probably want all the allowance things and a contract balance. But for sure, for what we're talking about right now, we want the approved change orders. We actually are not going to check mark for them to see job costs posted because it's a fixed contract and they shouldn't see any of that. So let's save that. Now, if I open buyer invitation, it's going to open a PDF report that I can either download to my own computer and then email or print it out if I want to and hand it to them, which gives you the buyer information here. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. So you should send that to your home buyer because when you send them a hard copy of the change order, it'll, t it'll tell them you're online. And so you can go online and sign approval of the change orders. So let's close this and let's close this and let's see what happens when we go back to our change order. And let's open it and print store hard copy and let's say send CO. Now a comment has opened and if I click it's already set up to send to the buyer etc which we don't have an email address for the buyer yet put in there but we should have. But we're not going to send this really. But this is what they would get and they would get this message that here attached is your change order. If you have received your login information from your builder, log in and use the button labeled change orders and we'll do all this. But the home buyer in a comment or an email will be getting that information. So I will go back and I will just close this, play like I sent it. And what I'd like to do now, I'm going to go and be the buyer online real quickly. Let's put in the builder ID, the job code, 
and the password. Then click to open your file. And this is what the buyer will see right now. We have put some plans, etc., some documents and plans, and maybe some plans that they can see if they click on them, various plans. They can see their contract balance and all sorts of other things. But what we're interested in right now is the change order, builder approved. And so let's click on that right there to open it up. And notice that it says approve all lines on this CO. Now hopefully they reviewed it. And we can do approve all lines. And I'll just play like I'm Linda Smith or something and make some signature. And I'll commit it. And then if I try to submit, it's going to say type in your name so that we really know who signed it if we can't read their signature. And then submit. And then it says, is it okay to approve all lines on the change order using your signature type name and today's date? Yes, approve. Approve all CO lines. It's now creating a card copy of the change order that now has the buyer signature on it. So let's take a look at that, which it opened so we could see it. And let's take a look and see what we see. And we do see my signature now on this date. Not my signature, we were pretending like we were Mary Loveman and I did Linda Smith because we keep using the, the Smith John job and some other things. But anyway, it would have been Mary Loveman, and it would have said Mary Loveman here if that was typed. This should make the point to you that the buyer can approve things online. And this would say Mary Loveman, and it would say the dates. So that's what I wanted to show you, is that they could get online if you set them up, and then they can sign approval. And then if we go back to where we were inside CHS, as a CHS user, close this, and go to change orders approved and open this particular change order you're going to now see that it says buyer approval by Linda Smith which you're going who's Linda Smith why did she sign for this job but anyway and you can remove only a top level permission if there's some reason that we need to change that signature over there which is what I'll do in a moment but somebody with a top level permission can click to remove the buyer approval so that it's not showing as approved anymore. You see buyer approved all lines, yes. So just to let you know that there is a way out if something happens and the buyer says, oh no, I didn't mean to sign it or whatever, or you need to change something. Because you'll notice now that the buyer has approved, and if I click to edit this change order line, it's going to be all locked down because it's buyer approved. I can't change anything because all of this stuff is stuff they would have seen on their hard copy when they legally signed it. The only thing you can change, type in some internal notes. You can do that because that's internal and the buyer doesn't see those. If I try to delete a line, the buyer has signed it and I can't delete it. So if there's some big reason you've talked to your buyer, if you do this, the buyer will receive a comment that says the builder has removed your approval of this change order just to let you know there's a way out. But a lot of things will get blocked once the buyer does sign approval online. So here we are back on the jobs dashboard and we've added one new change order. I'm going to switch this for just a second to another job that has been more active in our demo. And I'm clicking Smith John and I'd like to show you that if I click change orders approved, I get a list of four different change orders that they've issued. But if you drill down on them, you'll see those various lines that are behind the change order. I had one similar for add 400 square foot patio and there's the lines and where you can edit them, etc. wanted to show you what that looked like when there was more than one change order. So let's go back to our Loveman 2 job and let's click on change orders approved. We also can have a list of change orders not approved that we did not mark that the builder had approved yet and you saw where I was being able to change that and how that would show up on the change order report. The ones that were not approved just so that those could show what effect they would have on the contract price. Let's go to change orders approved. We have one change order and that you can see total payments, which we're going to do in just a moment. But let's drill down to it one more time. What I did was I went out and I issued purchase orders for all four of these now. And you can review the purchase orders for, th for this change order. And you see that I have four of them now. This is called the Purchase Orders Management. And this one is for change order Loveman 201. And it's showing the PO total. And like you saw me do before, I could drill down on the PO by clicking on this amount. Also by clicking on the PO number. 
And if we had posted any costs against the PO, some actual costs where we were paying the suppliers, that would be shown here. Just wanted to show you that so that if you do a report of this, a results report that shows PO total versus posted costs in the over under, you can get a little picture of how much you've gone over or under on your estimated costs if you've attached a PO to the various lines. So I wanted to show you that I'd issued those. The other thing is that you can review the payments. This is a notify builder. So whoever's out on the field, if you want to send this to PDF to let them know about these various things in different stages that are a result of this uh, change order and the delay days, if you just need to notify them. So let's go ahead and go post a payment for this change order from the home buyer. But I'm trying not to slow this video down too much. So let's go back to the home main menu and let's go to the area for posting deposits. And let's do bank deposits. First of all, I'd like to mention in earlier uh, videos and other videos about setting up accounting. You can set up something called deposit categories that are more in English so that your accountant can help you decide which account on your general ledger account you should post those kinds of things to. So we have like a deposit category for down payment. The accountant said post that to GL account 2010 under liabilities for contract deposits because this builder is on a completed contract method so all monies coming in are going to some liability accounts but notice we also have one for change order and that's dimmed out because a payment for a change order is going to react to this deposit category in a certain way in CHS. But the accountant said use 2020 GL account and post that to change order deposits which is also a liability account. These various deposit categories are used to group in total the job revenues by those categories also, besides helping with a GL number that will drop in when you post a deposit. So let's add a new deposit for that. First of all, I'm going to select our payer, which is Loveman, the buyer on the thing, and it was Mary Loveman. Because we attached this payer to this job, the job dropped in, and the department associated with the job dropped in, and let's just pretend like they gave us some check. Just give it some random check number. This video is not about posting accounts receivable payments. It's about posting a change order payment. So let's drop down and see what we've got. And we see we have one change order and that its balance is 18656. We have not received any payments yet. So I'll select that. So CHS put in that change order deposit category. Look to see what general ledger account number you want for that and it put in the amount. Now you can change the amount, you could change the GL number if you need to for some reason, etc. But I quite often use a description of CO01 payment, something like that. So the deposit total is this. We're using this particular bank account to post our construction stuff to. And I'll use today's date that we receive the deposit and I'll submit that deposit. And it tells me what balance is left in the bank account after that deposit. So I'm going to close that and close the deposits menu. And I'm going back to the jobs dashboard. And I'm going to look at change orders approved again. Now you'll notice that we have total payments and a balance due of zero on that. If I drill down on it, you'll see under change order this amount right here, 18 656.25. If I close that and if I go to COs and payments database for the job, which is a great big a list grouped by the change order. We only have one change order, but then you start seeing other ones. You can see that a line has now been put in here for the payment right here. And the total of the CO lines and the payment line is now zero, mean that, meaning this has been completely paid for. You can get some good results reports of all of this to take a look at. Also, we can open the file cabinet for the hard copies of change orders. And we can see that we have one in here. And here's a PDF we can open of the change order. So I think that's about it on setting up the change order and the payments. Let's jump back over to the ECC for Loveman 2. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. You can now see that we have change order amounts on these lines over here and a total of our change order estimated costs. Again, this is not the price to the customer. 
this sheet is about our estimated cost. So you can see that right here on deck material, I decided to use that to post one of the lines from the change order. If you drill down on these, you can start seeing that particular line of the change order if you like. If you drill down on the total change orders, you can see the various lines for the change orders here for that various type of thing by cost code so that you can analyze it and you can see what total profit you're expecting. You can see that I did a PO. You could drill down on it and you can see that it is not affecting and saying that we're over budget because the change order cost that we estimated becomes part of our total estimated budget. It's what we're expecting. It's not an overage amount right now. And the POs are, that I issued are for the same amounts as what we estimated the cost to be. If I issued a PO here for higher than what I estimated the cost for the deck material to be, then we would show an overage. Notice that our amount under budget is still the same as what we did before we issued that change order. So let's go to the ECC tools and reports and go back to that set price contract type. And you can see that there has been an increase, that we are increasing our profit that, we're, that we were originally expecting. Because we had a fixed price of this. This is the price of the change orders to the customer, which again, you can drill down on and see the information on that, the cost and the price. And so now we have a revised price of this less our current estimated cost at completion, which includes estimated cost for the change orders, revised profit, and our profit difference we're headed up by 4,225.10, which is the 3,000 something from the change order fees that we're going to get, plus the amount we're going under, that 400 and something that we were going under for our estimated costs. You can do a little math on that. Now if I look at revenues received, I will see that change order amount. These are grouped and totaled by that deposit category I told you about. And I will see that it's made up of a change order payment and a down payment. In other videos, we'll start talking about interim draw requests for these types of things. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of where we are at after issuing change orders for this particular job. Okay, now I'd like to take a minute to discuss something called allowances, which we discussed when we were talking about preparing a budget worksheet, and that you can mark certain items on your budget with the measure of allowance. Right here at the top of this estimated cost of completion worksheet, it says red A is for allowance. So you can see the ones that are allowances. I am going to do a field search for just the allowances, and you can see right here, allowances, question mark, type in A. So I will, and I'll do a search. These are all of the cost centers that we marked for allowances on our budget report. And you can just see those, and you can just print out a list of those if you want to do a results report. But let's take a look at the ECC tools and the tools for allowances again for just a moment. When we were working on the budget, we went over some about the allowance worksheet and agreement and showed how you see the list of your allowance amounts. And I can't remember if we discussed this, but there's a place on this allowances worksheet for the job to go ahead and put in 25% that we will charge as a markup on allowance overages. And we will credit them because we are such a fair builder, 25% if they go under the allowances, they will get a credit. You can see here that there's various verbiage, buyer notes, that you put on the job budget that will print on an allowance agreement for the customer. I clicked allowance agreement there, and you can send this to PDF, but there's some information here. And it's showing that 25% as part of the agreement for charging for over and under allowances. Allowances are not change orders. CHS is tracking how much you go over and under allowances, and we'll include that on the contract balance report that we will see in a moment. Let's use an example of the front door. Let's go down here and find it right here. Let's say we did an allowance for $2,504, but we're going to issue a PO for a little higher. So let's just do that real quickly. And we're going to pay pro build. And the thing is, the buyer selected a higher quality door that is going to be more than what we budgeted. So you can see here that the allowance just dropped in for convenience, but let's just play like the door is 3000 to make it easy. And let's put a tax rate on that front door. So I'll create the purchase order. 
We won't go over all of that. We'll just close this and we'll close this. And now we can see, if I resubmit my search, we can see the front door now has a PO for more than what the allowance was. And it shows that our costs are going over what our originally budgeted costs are. But what I'd like to show you is the ECC is now the amount of the PO because it's higher than the budget. And if we go back to our tools and reports and do allowance tools, I'd now like to show you an allowances over under analysis. Notice that what is picked up here is the estimated cost at completion so that we can early on start showing the customer where they might be headed as far as their allowance overs and unders. Some builders call these options, by the way. So right away it picked that up. It added a 25% markup to it and it's showing an allowance adjustment of $929.98. Near the end of the job, you will go through all of your actual costs and use a tool to mark all your actual costs as done, which means that your actual costs that have been spent will then equal your ECC cost at completion. That's important near the end of the job so that you can calculate accurately based on actual costs what the allowance adjustment is. Let me go ahead and do something else to mirrors and glass. I'm going to just real quickly try to issue a PO for that for less than what we did. And let's use fashion glass and mirror. And let's say that the mirror and glass only came in at a thousand dollars and we'll create a purchase order and it's created. So I'll close all that and then let's resubmit our search for the allowance items and go down to mirrors and glass again. And I have check marked to use the lower PO for the ECC. So the ECC is now under by 118. And if we look at our allowance tools again, and we look at the allowance over under analysis, we now see this minus amount down here for mirrors and glass. And we can see that the total adjustment for allowances to our contract price would be 783.10, or this is basically a prediction of that. If you decide that you are going to issue like a change order for the difference here of 743.98, for this front door because you want to show it that they chose a higher one. Um, CHS is going to be real smart about keeping you from double dipping by charging for a change order and then charging for an allowance overage. So if you do do a change order for this difference here, it's going to subtract the change orders from this overage, adjust this allowance adjustment. So let's take a real quick look again at the contract price, etc. Notice right here in the middle the fixed price plus the change order price that we charge to the customer. And there's our allowance adjustment, which you can drill down on and see a report of those adjustments and where they came from. So now the revised price is based on this and our estimated profit variance has gone up a little because of what we're going to make on that allowance overage. So I just wanted you to know that, that CHS is really smart about tracking that stuff for you. If I close this and I go back to the reports tools and report central for the whole job, which has all kinds of reports here for you, <laughs> um, you can see one here that says something about contract and a contract balance report, which we've showed in some previous videos. But you can see the contract type and it's showing that amount. It's showing the total current price minus the revenues received and the contract balance right there. So what happens is when you get near the end of the job, this is a very valuable report to show what is owed. So you may not want to do those change orders for allowances so that you don't cross over because these are two different things. A change order is a change generally accepted that it's a change to the plans themselves. Something like that front door, they didn't change the size of the front door. They didn't change it on the plans. That's why they marked it as an allowance. So if the customer does an upgrade to that front door or spends less on something like mirrors, has nothing to do with the plan. So it's not usually considered to be a change order, but some builders do consider it that. But CHS is tracking that allowance adjustment and you will capture it at the end of the job when you say this is the amount that you owe me. So I just wanted you to know about that, the difference between allowances and change orders and how they show up here and are affected by the ECC. One more thing I'd like to go over real quickly. 
before we leave talking about the ECC so much, is if I go back to Report Central here, I'm going to the ECC and Cost Variances. I want to show you a simple budget to actual without unit costs and open this report. It is just the original budget, the CO budget, the total budget, and the actual costs. Remember, I've showed you this before. We have not posted any actual costs yet, so it's showing a minus 428.00044. We're not really under by that amount right now. We have adjusted that on the ECC. So this report of just simple actual to budget doesn't show you very much until actually the job is completed in a way. I mean, it can be interesting to open it, but I just still wanted to emphasize how valuable an ECC variance report is versus the simple actual to budget report. If you go all the way down to the bottom, this is showing right here, if you look at the titles at the top, that the ECC is headed over budget right now by $133. And that is much more meaningful, and it shows you where these various things are headed by cost center rather than just actual to budget. I just wanted to make that point again, that get used to using the estimated cost of completion report, and a report like this should be the variance report that you're using instead of a simple budget to actual, so that you know where you're headed every single day and not having to wait to the end of the job to figure out whether you're over or under those various costs. I hope you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.